All right. Thanks everybody for being here. Really excited to be talking with y'all about some of the authoring experience work that we've been doing. Um, specifically, going to be talking about Mercury Editor, which provides effortless, I think effortless, drag and drop publishing for Drupal. Basically replaces the no create. Um, and the node edit screens in Drupal with kind of a live preview. Anyways, that's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, my name is Justin. I'm the founder and CEO at Atten. We are a strategy design and development company. We're based in Denver, although at this point uh, fully distributed. We work with mission-driven organizations all over the world to plan, design, build, support, grow uh, digital products, websites, web applications mostly for organizations with .org, .edu, and .gov domains. Uh, I'm guessing a lot of folks like yourselves. Um, we've been working in the kind of content authoring space for a long time, doing Drupal for a long time, and we'll just uh, dive right in. So what we're going to talk about today is Mercury Editor. I'll talk a little bit about the key features that are offered, offered by the product dig into the module itself and the ecosystem, kind of talk about uh, the other systems that Mercury Editor is built on top of. We are not yet to stable. There's not yet a stable release. Just to jump ahead a little bit, Mercury is a Drupal module and it's available for download at drupal.org. It's not quite to stable. I'll talk about what it's going to take to get there, where we want to go beyond stable. Then I'll get into a couple of live demos. We'll take a look at what Mercury looks like kind of right out of the box. Um, and then I'll look at kind of a, a client project that shows what it looks like applied to a custom site. Uh, and then finally, we should have plenty of time for questions. Before I get too much further, has anyone in here already seen any Mercury Editor content? Have you seen demo? Amy June, great. Okay, so just a couple. That's awesome. Sometimes I had always good to know, so that's nice. This will be mostly, should be mostly new material for y'all then. Um, every once in a while I get in a room where a lot of people have seen the videos. So I'm like, oh, well, we're pretty much doing the same thing. All right, so let's dig in. Um, oh, before I get too much further, if you want to take a quick picture of this QR code or follow up later or just find it on our website, we do have a Mercury Editor mailing list. We'll be sending out updates as we make updates to the module and of course as we get closer and closer to a stable release, which I am super excited about. All right, so Mercury Editor is first and foremost a Drupal module. It's just another Drupal module that can be downloaded on drupal.org. This was a big turning point for us. This is all based on layout paragraphs. Who all here is familiar? I know, yeah, some of y'all are familiar with layout paragraphs. Cool. So Mercury Editor is layered on top of layout paragraphs. And for a long time, it was really just kind of a code word for a suite of customizations we were applying to create this sort of front end experience for layout paragraphs or based on layout paragraphs. Um, anymore, we've kind of turned the corner with that and Mercury Editor is something you can just download and it will just work on a, on a D9 or now D10 site. So it's a Drupal module. It provides no code. The idea is that it provides no code drag and drop authoring. It's specifically tailored to the, to the needs of uh, marketers and editorial staff. It's based around having a custom component library. When we talk about components in this context, we're talking about small chunks of content. And all of that's using the Paragraphs module in Drupal. Who all here is familiar with the Paragraphs module? So a lot of folks, okay, great. So just a way to break up content on notes for those who aren't so familiar. Um, Mercury Editor provides styles management for fine tuning designs and layouts, customizing styles. Um, and then finally it provides just a streamlined UI for again, interacting with content or for interacting with the authoring experience. I'll talk just a little bit about the ecosystem. Again, Mercury Editor is available on Drupal just as a module, so you can go download the code. Um, it's freely available. It heavily uses the Paragraphs module, and more specifically, very heavily uses the Layout Paragraphs module. Layout Paragraphs provides a drag and drop UI for working with, uh, with Paragraphs in a really flexible way to create really flexible layouts. Mercury is built on top of that and provides this whole like live preview, we'll get into it in a demo here in a minute, but it provides this like live demo concept um, on top of uh, layout paragraphs. It leverages layout API and core. The, the main idea with all of this is that while Mercury is really new and the downloads on drupal.org are still quite low, it's built on 
really mature software that's been around for a long time and is heavily used. Uh, and then finally, Mercury also makes use of style options. <coughs> Um, Mercury, as I said before, is he it heavily relies on layout paragraphs. I like talking about the adoption. It just continues to grow. Uh, layout paragraphs, we continue to see adoption grow. So we're up to close to 8,000 uh, sites using layout paragraphs, just according to stats from Drupal.org. And that number continues to grow consistently, which is, again, just awesome to see. We are not yet too stable. I want to talk a little bit about what needs to happen to get to stable. Some of this has been updated already really recently. So one, we wanted to make sure that, layout, that Mercury Editor is something that can just be installed and just works, provides the experience we're going to be looking at on any D9, D10 website, and it's kind of easy to use, easy to roll out. Second, we wanted Mercury to be able to be installed and uninstalled with no repercussion on your content. So you can install Mercury, you can use it, you can decide down the road that that's not for you, uninstall it, and your site is just basically a paragraphs-based site at that point. So there's no real negative repercussion to installing, or rather uninstalling down the road. You're not locked in. Not only are you, there's no like vendor lock, but there's not even a technology lock there. You can walk away from it down the road. Testing is super important. Um, anybody here familiar with Cypress as a testing framework? I might. It's, Cypress is awesome. It's really easy to install. You can install it with NPM. Um, it provides JavaScript-driven browser-based testing with, uh, I, that, that's a whole like other session or a bunch of other sessions in and of itself. I might run through a quick Cypress test just because it'll really quickly run through a lot of what we'll be talking about today and show kind of a visual uh, example of that. Okay, so those three things, we're, done, we're, we're good. We're done with those. Accessibility, we're still working on. Layout paragraphs except itself, I'm pretty happy with the accessibility of that piece of technology or that module. We still have some work to do with Mercury Editor. Mercury heavily uses iframes and just getting some of the um, focus correct between the iframes and navigation and some of the uh, some of the other controls in place for accessibility is a focus that needs to be done. We want to improve the documentation that's available and just the main project page and then finally all of this we're shooting to have done still this year so we are on track for stable release this year beyond stable the stuff i'm going to show today is essentially mercury editor leveraging layout paragraphs so it does a really good job of providing this kind of interactive live preview with paragraphs we want to extend that to other field types so think about like text fields where you might just click on the text and immediately have a rich text editor right on the content rather than having to go to some other form or even hit like the edit button and it pop up a form. We want to skip that whole form process and as much as possible have editing in the browser, sort of like what quick edit could have been, um, but a much more seamless experience. That's something we're making headway on. We want UI for governance controls. There's APIs in place right now that say what components can be published in which layouts, but it's just an API. So you have to build in those controls yourself. We want to create a UI around that. That again comes after stable. And then better integration with single directory components. Are folks here familiar with what's happening with, with SDC? Yeah, pretty, pretty awesome in the front end development world, this whole idea of abstracting components into web components. Um, and we want more direct integration between what we call components, which are really just paragraph types and their SDC counterparts, or their SDC templates. And then, finally, uh, we want better templating features. And I'll, I'll show a little bit. So there are template features in Mercury right now. We want to really build on that and improve that in the future. All right, so that's it as far as a deck. I am going to, I'm realizing that doing this out of like the side view might be kind of interesting. Um, but I'm going to quickly just do a live demo and show how Mercury works. So this is a real simple Drupal, Drupal 9, now obsolete, Drupal 9 <laughs> website. Um, I ran the install scripts like half an hour ago or something like that. It does it, absolutely nothing except install Mercury Editor. It also installs, so with Mercury Editor, um, there is a test sub-module. You'll have to have the setting enabled in your configuration that says Drupal can scan for test modules. But if you enable the setup test sub-module, it'll create a special content type and a bunch of paragraph types to test out Mercury Editor. As I was saying before, all Mercury does is create an alternate node create and node edit experience. If I go to add content, 
If I first check out a basic page, all of this will look familiar. We just have our typical kind of basic page form. We can give it a title, body, we've got the rich text options, etc. Save, if we want to preview the work, we would preview and have to like come back to the form if we weren't happy with that. Um, to show what this looks like with Mercury Editor enabled, I'll go back to the content screen, click on add content. We have this special test content type. I'll dig into settings a little bit and show what the settings are for enabling various content types to use Mercury. Any content type can be configured to use Mercury. If I go into add my new test content type node, the edit, all of the edit options, the entire form has been moved into this tray on the right hand side. We can kind of tuck that away if we want. We have a live preview of the content that we're working with on the left hand side. If you've used layout paragraphs before, you will recognize this part of the interface. We have a sim simple plus button. We hit plus, we can add a new section, choose the number of columns for our section, hit save, it drops the section immediately in place. Can go in here and add some text. This again is one of those things that we're working on where we want to even bypass this text form and have you be able to just edit text on this page. But for now, we'll just do it this way and we'll add some text on the page. Hit save, immediately drops that in place into our page builder. I can drag that around into any of the other sections. I'll hit plus again over here. Now we'll go to an image, click add media. This is just very simple media integration, integrating with the media library. Choose a file, choose any of these, like, can't really see what that is from this angle. Uh, what is that, mountains, wood? I don't know, whatever, mountains, hit save. Insert selected, save again, and it drops that uh, media component right onto the page. And again, we can drag all of this around, go back and edit our text, maybe add a heading, and hopefully, oh, except the headings have not been configured on this. Um, hopefully, this gives you a sense for how this works and kind of what the authoring experience is like um, within this editor. We can go into our section if we wish and change the number of columns. So I can go out and change this to a three column and then maybe move this text into the third column here. Um, one thing that we wanted to support in this whole idea or this whole, this whole concept, this whole approach is uh, creativity in the browser. So if you decide you actually don't want this to be three columns, you're gonna go back to one column, you can do so. It'll ask you what you wanna do with the content that would be lost in that, in that move. Hit save and it's moved all of that into that single column. Um, at any point I can hit save. We also have these preview options. I can see what this looks like in mobile. Go back out to desktop. Oh, and then within mobile we have presets. All of these presets can be configured on the settings page and you're really just adding, you'd add a name and then a uh, dimension size for what the preset is. And we can take a look at the settings here in a second just to see how that works. I'll get this form back out here and give this a title uh, which updates automatically on the left hand side again we're extending this sort of live preview to more fields as we move forward right now it's really just supporting that title and to be honest a lot of the sites that we work on we don't even show the title on the main page the title is just used for like meta purposes uh, at any time I can hit save it saves using an Ajax call press done and it kicks out to the new page looks really similar to what we were just looking at, although obviously not, no longer in the mobile view. Um, and that's the basic idea, is that this provides, again, this kind of live preview of the content. On the left-hand side, this is using the Olivero theme. So it's showing the content in the default front-end theme for Drupal. And then our form is using the Claro theme. So the Claro theme is being, being used for the form. You can specify in the settings, and I'll take a look at here in just a second at what the different settings are for, um, for Mercury, but you can specify what theme to use for this form. All of the customizations that we've applied are on top of Claro. So we recommend that people use Claro for the, the edit form um, on the right. And I'll show you what I mean specifically if that's confusing at all. And then the, the preview itself is just going to use your front end theme, so there's no need to even configure that, if that makes sense. Let's hit done. We'll take a look at the settings just for a second so you all get a sense for exactly how this works. Go down under Mercury Editor Settings. It's pretty simple. 
again, we can say what, what theme we want that edit tray to use. What gets a little tricky or confusing here is if you're using Gin, anybody here use Gin or have experience with Gin? A few folks, a lot of, more and more folks are moving to Gin. We use Gin almost exclusively as the admin theme for our projects. It's really heavy handed. So when we push that whole form into that side tray, there are things that are happening in the Gin theme that we, we really don't want to apply to the edit form. And what we wanted instead was the flexibility to say, what admin theme, it's really just what theme, can you, you can use anything you want, um, for that edit tray. Eventually there will be a Mercury editor edit tray theme that's just like a super lightweight theme to control all of the styling for, uh, for editing. That'll be, that's like a nice to have quite a ways down the road. Um, you can apply this to whatever content type you like. So we looked at the basic page. If I simply toggle that on, now it'll work for basic page as well. This is where you dump in the mobile presets. If I go over to skip form settings, so we're not using this at all here. I think maybe the example, I'm gonna, the second example I'll show does use skip form. Um, a simple example of something you might wanna skip up the form for, say you have a horizontal rule component. You don't need a form. You don't need to add like text for your horizontal rule or anything. You just, you, you click add section or add new component horizontal rule is in there, you hit horizontal rule, you just want it to immediately drop on the page, you would turn on skip form for that horizontal rule component, um, which it would be nice if I had that here to show you, but I think I will here in a second on another project. Menu settings are blank. You can say how to group. This will make more sense in this other example I'll show you, but for menu settings, you can create groups for your menu and group different related elements in the components list into related sections and dialog settings, you can specify, and all of this is just by dumping YAML right into the configuration, but you can specify um, settings for specific dialogs that are used throughout Mercury. So you can say your, your media um, dialog, for example, is you know, 700 pixels wide or 80% 80, 80 wide, as opposed to just being the default. And that's it. So this, again, settings are really simple. You know, to set up this, um, this example site, I mean, all you really have to do is require Mercury Editor as a module. Everything else is taken care of for you. It will require layout paragraphs, which will require the paragraphs module. It will require style options. There's really nothing else that's required. If you just do Composer require Mercury Editor, um, you're good. Or Drupal slash Mercury Editor, you're good. All right, so that's a quick look at how this works on a brand new, simple D9 website. Let's take a look at a more customized site. So this is one project in a portfolio of projects um, that we've been working on for a client called the Sanford Underground Research Facility. They are the largest underground research facility in North America, uh, the deepest underground research facility in North America, and they do science bringing all kinds of organizations from all over the world together um, in South Dakota. And one of the, uh, one piece of this project was just creating a website for their annual STEM festival that they put on, so a free event that they do every year. And it's just, again, one, one piece in this overall collection of sites, and they're using Mercury Editor pretty heavily. So what I'm gonna do really quickly is just show how this works, essentially rebuilding this homepage or showing how they would have built this homepage, how they did build this homepage using Mercury. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go back to add content, in this case, we're just dealing with the basic page. And runs a little slow on Lando with all of the caching turned off. One option, and this is available actually through layout paragraphs, you can, you can, enable, you can uh, configure layout paragraphs so that you have to start with a section. We'll click add section, choose a one column section, I mentioned styles management. All of these styles are custom to each specific site. Using a single YAML file to configure all of, all of the different styles that are available. And in this case, of course, the actual thumbnails and the image assets as well. I'm gonna choose that ninth option as the style for the background of this section. Hit save. It drops in the section with our background image. We go up here and hit the plus button 
here's all of our different uh, components that we have available for this particular project. As I mentioned before, in the settings for Mercury, it's pretty easy to break these up into different groups. So we have content, media, etc. I'm going to start with just a simple heading element and we'll say where science and fun collide. Let's see if I actually spelled that right. Oh no, I didn't look at that. There we go. Um, again, we can take a look at our basic styles here. We'll go, we'll change that to normal, hit save, and it drops that right onto the page. We'll hit the plus button. Go ahead and add some text. See if I can find some, do this offline. Yeah, there we go. Grab some text, paste that in. Maybe with a link here. Bear with me while I find my mouse. Alright, so we'll just add a link in here, take our survey, and link it to our mouse. Search survey, choose styles, go down to the yellow button, hit save, and it drops that paragraph right on the page. Again, everything can be dragged and dropped around, so that's not exactly where I want it to be. I can move this component up. I'll just kind of keep on going down the page here. I'll add this date and location component, which is specific to this project, um, C708-2023, and the location is Lead, South Dakota, and everywhere else. Again, so you get a sense for, um, we have an exact representation of what the content is as we're moving through this process. I'm gonna add another section. I believe this is a one column. Let's see, where did that go? Look, it's a little tricky to get to that plus button. All of that, even the styling around uh, padding for all of those elements is dependent on the specific project. Go down to a video, add media. It's gonna pull up just available videos. Let's choose one here. Insert selected, and save. Drops the video in place. We'll add another section. This time I'll go to a three column and let's see, we'll do, actually let's do one more up above this column. Where you at? There we go. Open my, yeah, perfect. Get a heading, say, meet the speakers. I should have sat a little bit on the other side of this table. All right, meet the speakers. We'll add some speakers in here. We have a person reference and we'll start with find my mouse again. All right, let's see if that's still on there. Yeah, Brian. And hit save. It drops our person here. Um, this again is an example of where we can use styles. So I'm gonna go back into styles and choose to use the card format for the speaker. Okay, that's looking pretty good. We can use the replicate. It just drops, you know, recreates that or duplicates that component. Go back in and hit edit. Change this to chief. And we red cloud, hit save. Do the same thing again. Drag this component over. Here, Sam, and this look at this is looking pretty good. I mean, this is using the design system that was established for this site. Ultimately, they wanted to go in a different direction for um, the actual layout of their speakers. Again, we wanted to support that kind of creative license. So, what they ended up doing instead was we'll just add a section, make it a one column, drag our speaker up into here edit the speaker, change the style from card to featured, and that gives us kind of this full screen look. Um, add another section, again, one column, do the same thing with the second speaker. Once again, edit, go in here and give them the default style. Then I'm gonna change this section to a one column. 
Uh, once again, it's asking what I want to do with that content that would have been lost. I'm just saying to put it in the main content area, edit this reference one more time, change the style one more time. We're going to go to default, hit save, and again, you get a sense for the ability to make decisions right in the browser. Um, at any time, we can check out what this would look like in mobile. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'm just curious, as you're editing, um, uh, I'm not seeing any option to save your content as a draft if you needed to. Like, if you work with a group of editors who might need to send their content for review, it looks like all the changes you're making are going live on the site the moment you hit save. Is there any option for this to work with something like Workbench or something where you could you know, flag it as needing review before it gets published, you know, in case you don't want people yeah, yeah. to make changes like this immediately on your live site. Totally, it's a great question, and yes, absolutely there is. That's actually, so all of those options have been moved into this forum on the right. So if you were using um, content moderation, and I think they actually are, I think they are using workflow. So this right now is a draft, and if I hit save, uh, so these changes, as I'm making them live, we, we have a live preview. It's not making, it's not actually saving anything until we hit the save button. Gotcha. Okay. When we hit the save button, it's saving that according to whatever options you have uh, using content moderation or whatever workflow modules that you have in place. And so this is not yet published. Um, I can hit done to preview my work. You know, you can have any complex work, workflow chain that you want, approvals, et cetera, and send that on to the rest of the team. So. This is the page that we've just been working on. Again, looks really similar to what the homepage was. You know, just imagine extending that to the rest of that content. Um, and that is about everything I have to show in terms of a demo. Yeah, and I'd love to answer any questions about it. Yeah, I mean, is it an option to add in like custom blocks? Not At the ones that have been <coughs> Yeah. Not the Absolutely, so all of these this is all using the paragraph module. So these are all paragraph types, and you can create block reference fields. So you can have blocks that have block reference fields that you reference in your paragraph types. That would be the way to handle blocks. As far as custom blocks, like content blocks, what uh, Layout Builder would use, for example, I mean, you could, it, it, basically it's using paragraphs instead, is the best way to think of that. Yeah, go ahead. Beth. What's your vision for the end state of Mercury Editor? Um, the end state, I mean, what we see, I mean, a live preview for editing content. And eventually we want to see that extended to other fields. For right now, it's really just a way to compose composable pages, meaning pages built on paragraphs. I kind of meant like, is it something you would hope would enhance the editing experience for Drupal and be included in core? Is it something that Atten is going to support for the next 10 years? Like, what sort of the bigger yeah, picture? Good. I, I, I see what you mean. No, I mean, right now, I, I don't have, having been involved in Drupal for a long time, I don't have any um, aspiration that this would be in, included in core. I think for uh, sites that are leveraging paragraphs and have gone down this paragraphs path, this is a really powerful alternate UI. And yeah, we've wanted better authoring experience tools just for our clients for a really long time. And this is kind of the result of that work. So for us, I mean, this is largely driven by client projects. And all of the enhancements that we're making are, are uh, prioritized in line with client projects. Thank you. Okay. Uh, how do you... Uh how do you enforce design constraints? Um, so, for example, um, we, my last company, we did a lot of paragraph components. We specifically limited where you could place them so that they fit with the framework defined by the design team. And one of the problems that you run into with Layout Builder and, and Panelize and before it is that it's pretty easy to mess up a page by putting stuff in places where it wasn't really how do you deal with that problem? Yeah, great question. So right now, that's all handled at the API level, meaning there are APIs for creating those constraints, but you have to program them. So you have to say, um, you, you would have to write a custom module that governs, that basically says, this component can go inside this section, meaning, you know, I don't know if these are great examples, but maybe like the uh, video can only go in a one column in, in the one column layout in the one column region or in the main region. Um, 
that's next that's on the list for us on the roadmap beyond stable is creating a UI for exactly those governance uh, rules so that you will it just like not let you drag it there or yeah to yeah exactly exactly and that was actually built into layout paragraphs I mean layout paragraphs already has that as a feature so you can say like um, for a simple example is in layout paragraphs you can you can specify how many levels deep something can be placed into how many levels deep sections can be nested and if you say two levels deep there's already an API where layout paragraphs won't let you drag something deeper than that two levels if that makes sense it just won't work like you try to drag it it just won't work that same API is available to create other rules to say like okay you can't put this call to action inside the fourth column of a four column layout because it looks terrible. It's, we, we're not going to support that. So you can program that into that. We have, I mean, it's a bit of a, I, I'd be happy to talk more about this um, even after the session, but we do have a contrib module that it, I, it still requires some programming. It requires leveraging a hook, but you can basically write an array structure and say, okay, here's the components that can go inside these regions and these layouts. And we want to abstract that even further um, and put a UI on top of that so that you can you know, easily say in the UI, you can choose kind of what your component is and then say where that component can go. So that's where we're headed. The API is already there, it's already doable. The problem is if you don't have a UI, if you don't have an easy way to do it, it's one of the first things that gets sacrificed in a project. And then down the road, you do end up with some like governance issues. Yeah, as you might imagine. Amy Jane? Um, does it support Markdown? Oh, yeah, it would support Markdown. That's, and that's just something that you would configure in the paragraph type. So you would specify Markdown as your um, rich text editor, as your text editor, instead of, in this case, CK5, CK okay. Editor 5. Yeah. So you mentioned you're working towards direct support for SDC. So what would, today, what would the story be for using SDC components with? Uh, well, I mean, really just the improvements that SDC provides um, at large. So what we're doing, so when we tackle projects, the way we, talk, the way we approach projects is we first go through a design, uh, a design process. That ends with creating a design system. That design system we then take into front end by building out web components, usually then publishing those with Storybook, if you're familiar with Storybook. SDC provides integration to Storybook, so it's a great platform for sharing components across an entire organization, across projects, et cetera. We would like to tie that, we want to tie those templates directly to these components. So right now the process is, you know, you go through that whole thing, you publish your components to Storybook, you then create your paragraph types, and each paragraph template just maps to an SDC component, it would be nice to skip that whole process. So if there was a, if there was a middle layer, really, really just a custom module that says, okay, for this paragraph type, we're going to map it to this SDC component. Right. And it would be nice to tie those components to style options. So style options just provides different formatting options. And is, it, is that an alternative to UI Suites style submodule? Maybe I don't even use, I don't even know UI suites to be honest. Yeah. So I, I so do you mean is style options an alternative to that? Right. Yeah. So style options provides a way to combine all of your different um, style options I and mean, all of your different. For example, like so, so there's a bunch of different plugins. One would just be like CSS class, and you can say these classes are available for this paragraph type. Map it to the paragraph type, but you do all of that in a single YAML file. So all the different styles that a content editor might choose for the different paragraphs are managed in a single YAML file. It kind of simplifies and brings all it together. Otherwise, what happens is, if you have 50 different paragraph types, and each one has, say, a color picker, and then you decide somewhere down the road that you want to add a color to that color picker, that's a horrible job to go back in and like <laughs> add that color to each color picker on every single paragraph type. Style options brings all that into a centrally manageable place, if that makes sense. Challenges SDC provides some of those options right. in the configuration of yeah, the component. Those are props, right? Just exactly, just... exactly. So it'd be nice if props were tied directly to style options, which is where we're going with that too. Okay. But uh, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, I mean, all of this for us is driven on, driven by the priorities of. I mean, we're in the, we're in the client services business. We're an agency, um, and all of this is driven by the needs of our clients. Um, so, it, it, you know, it's on the list somewhere. <laughs> 
I think we're at like 10 minutes. Is that right? Anything? Great. Cool. So I guess room or time for a couple more questions if there are any. I'm yeah. Client, my content editor loves this. I will just Thanks, say yes. that. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Thanks. So was the, was the Mercury editor to solve the issue of when you use layout paragraphs in the admin theme, you don't get yeah. the front end styles? Yeah, exactly. So I uh, solved that by just converting all the paragraphs to SDC components. So that way the styles were inside and pulled that in. And is that is that still in the context of your, I mean, all, the, the problem is as close as we could get it, we still always ended up wishing that we were just editing yeah, yeah. the actual front end yeah. view of the site. It's it's not perfect. Yeah. You still have other things you have to tweak the editing And you do. this gets really <clears throat> close. It's a little hard to navigate again out of the side of my, like this angle, but um, this gets really close because the edit form, again, the edit form is, actually what's happening here is just the live preview is in an iframe. So everything else, the main page is this like option, this UI across the top, this form down the right, everything else is in an iframe. And when you edit these components, the dialog is not loading inside the iframe, it's loading inside the main window, which means it gets all of the admin themes, uh, all of the admin styles. So you don't have to worry about maintaining, I mean the problem before is you'd have to style, you know, it was a whole nother project to style this form uh, so that it doesn't look terrible because our custom theme doesn't necessarily cover admin forms. And so that was, that was the issue, is you'd have this kind of bleeding of styles. This gets around that entirely. So it just, yeah, you know, nice. out of the box, it just kind of works. Um, there's still customizations you may want to add on top of it, and you can certainly do so, but out of the box, it just maintains that abstraction between the live preview and the admin theme um, of the dialogue in the edit form. Finally, somebody found a good use for iframes. I know, yeah, right, right, right. I'm a little embarrassed to say it's an iframe, but it really works. And it was weird to land on that as like, um, the uh, the ultimate solution, but it really works. And there's some really cool stuff happening, I, I think, behind the scenes where the Ajax commands that are coming back are being wrapped in a response that is the correct theme for the iframe, getting passed down to the iframe. So that gets kind of super nerdy and te technical, but kind of kind of interesting as far as what's happening behind the scenes. Are you going to have any pre-built components uh, to go with this? Uh Man, we've wrestled with that idea, and we've thought about even the idea of like a component server, where we might have like com you could subscribe to a component server, and uh, and I don't mean subscription like like paid, although we've thought about that too. But just like where you might have a a component server, you could imagine like an organization. Well, it'd be very easy for you to imagine an organization where you're serving lots of internal clients, and you want to maintain a library of components across an enterprise, and you might want clients to be able to turn components on and off from that master server. Um, we've thought a lot about that. I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, again, it just kind of depends on the direction we're pulled by, by um, our work for our clients, but that's certainly a possibility. It would be really cool. Uh, and how easy or hard is it to like, add in new components Oh, it's, that's a great question too, and I, I am glad you asked that. I should have thought to bring this up earlier. They're just paragraph types. Have you used the paragraphs module? You know the paragraphs module? Yeah, great. So it's just paragraph types. So if we go into structure and down to paragraph types, that's our components. And when we go into paragraph types, if we want to add another component, um, all we do is add the paragraph type. And you know, give it a name and give it its fields, etc. And the template is just like any other method. Exactly, the template's just like anything else, and that's where this whole, you know, the whole question of where does SDC come into play? That's where it comes into play. Is SDC is the template layer for paragraphs? I mean, it's the template layer. It could be the template layer for everything, but it's the template layer for paragraphs in this case. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You mentioned WA issues. Is that where you have the iframe? Yeah, it just needs more testing. There's, and to be honest. There are, I don't even know of any specific issues. I just am sure there are some. I'm sure there are some. I think because we have not gone through a thorough process, um, I mean, we have, a, we're a small agency. We have a full-time um, accessibility expert on staff. That's something that's a huge value for us and a huge uh, priority for us. 
and this has not gone through our regular process for ensuring that it meets um, various accessibility um, specifications and we we absolutely have to cross that off the list before we get to stable I expect that to happen still this year so just in the next couple months yeah yeah oh we have time all right oh five minutes I'll keep them coming <laughs> so if you were to uninstall mercury from the site right now what would happen um, nothing Nothing. So, what would happen? You would go just editing content would look different. Okay. Yeah. So okay. you would go to edit content. The paragraph layouts, all that, all that. Is it no, nice? it would stay the same. Yeah, all that would stay the same. Um, I kind of want to try it now, but I'd, I'd have to get terminal up. But you I. Would just what, start having done this recently, you would just get the, the standard node edit screen. Yeah. And it would have layout paragraphs on it. Yeah. So you'd have the node edit screen with layout paragraphs with your layout paragraphs fields. Yeah. So. That's a recent change. We were shipping layouts with Mercury Editor, yeah. and we were shipping some style option plugins with Mercury Editor, and that's fine, except that if we have, once, once we have layouts, if your content is using those layouts, then if you want to install the module, things break. Yeah. So we got away from all that, we're not shipping any layouts, it is really purely just an admin experience tool, and if you want to install it, you're just using layout paragraphs. Which and you're kind of in good company because a lot of people are using the Paris. Yeah. So was your demo being recorded, or or is it only your voice that's being recorded? Uh, like what you were sharing with us. On the uh, I think it is being recorded. Yeah, it's running through, through this right here. Through. Yeah. We'll, we'll yeah. get to see yeah. The, yeah. what he did. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. There's also if you go to our website atten.io, um, there's a you'll be able to find Mercury Editor there. There's a video there that basically shows exactly what I just did. Okay. Uh, and we, I mean, this has become. Um, I, I mean, at the end of the day, we're a consulting company and we're interested in design, build projects with clients, but Mercury has become a big part of that. So something we're really like excited to talk to people about and, uh, you know, of course, we'd love to love talk more with you about it. So. I see a YouTube video on the same topic, but as 2022, I wonder what's the major difference between that version and this version? This one's live. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're pretty similar. That's what I was saying earlier. Sometimes I ask, I, anybody see this? People are like, yes. I'm like, well, you're going to see the same thing. Is it the same website? If it's the same website, it might be the same content. It's very similar to what it was. Um, we're closer to stable release, so that's a little bit different. Um, yeah. As we have new client projects live with this, we keep like incorporating those into the, into the demo, too. So, so yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it.